So what I'd like to do is use Atom to write a program uh, in HTML and JavaScript that will uh, find the area of a triangle when provided the base and the height. So what we'll do is we'll start with a new file. I'm going to save the file right away as triangle.html. I've got a new folder that I'm going to throw that in on my SkyDrive. Let's see if we can figure this out here. Computers, it's going to be for programming class. We'll put it in the JavaScript folder. And I've got a file folder called triangle area. So let's save it here. I'm going to call it triangle area. HTML. And we want to save it with the .html uh, extension so that Adam can properly uh, format the code, uh, give us some um, code coloring and things like that. So I'll hit save and here we go. Let's start by making a HTML document uh, that starts with a doc type HTML. Let's go ahead and save that. And then you know we start with HTML tags. Notice I have code com um, or tag completion on, so when I start an HTML tag, it gives me the closing tag. I can start a head tag, and it'll give me the closing head tag. I'm going to put a title on this thing. I will call it area of a triangle. And later we'll put some style in the heading, in the header. Let's start the body. And in this body, we want to have an H1, uh, which will display the title of our web page, Area of a Triangle. If you've installed the preview HTML extension, you can go up to your packages and find preview HTML and click Enable Preview. And you'll notice on the right now, I get a preview of the web page that header shows up. Now for this particular program we want to ask the user for the base and the height of the triangle. So I'll make this very simple. Basically I'm going to start a paragraph and in that paragraph I want to display the word base as a label and next to that I want to make an input. And this input is going to be of type text because the user is going to type uh, the value in, let's make it a size of, we'll say, 4. Uh, let's put that in quotes. And let's give this an ID, which will be called base, so that we can access this input from our JavaScript code. Next to that, in the same paragraph, we'll have a height field. And again, we'll make an input, type text also. Uh, the size will make four again, and this ID is going to be height. Oops, got to spell that right. Okay. Now, for whatever reason, uh, the code completion is giving me some weird things here, so let's just fix some of this stuff up. All right, our input. Oh, I see what happened. I spelled input wrong. All right, so let's make that an input. So now I have two inputs, and you can see they show over here, and I can enter things like 3 and 7. And right now, this code is not doing anything. We'll add the functionality in a minute. Uh, underneath that paragraph, let's put a button. So I want to put a break in here. And now let's make a button. Uh, oops, our type is button. And we need an event associated with this, so we'll call it on click. And spell that right. Notice with code completion, it shows up here, and I can just select on click. Um, my function is going to be called triangle area. And this is my callback function. It will be called anytime that the button is clicked. Now, this button should say area on it. Okay. I'm just double checking to make sure everything looks good there. And then finally, I want a separate paragraph, which will be uh, where my output shows up. So I'm going to make this ID output. 
and in that paragraph I'll say area equals we'll put a question mark right now a couple question marks I'm gonna bring that paragraph back up here I don't think it needs to be down there and this is where the output will show up later we'll style this but this is the basic structure of the HTML page I'm gonna save that and now I'm gonna do a file new I'll make a new file this one will be triangle area dot JS for JavaScript so let's just save it as right now now let's go back to that same folder it was in computers no it was in computers uh, programming somewhere around here is JavaScript triangle area where is that bad boy right there and we'll do triangle area dot JS again we want the code highlighting for JavaScript to be enabled so make sure you save that with a .js extension okay um, we are going to make a function I'm just gonna put a little divider here in case we add other functions to this later our function is triangle area I believe I spelled it like that but let's double check yep capital A for area in camel case triangle area is gonna be a function there's no parameters for this it's a callback um, and it with a semicolon now this function needs to know the height and the base what are these errors missing semicolon I got that taken care of don't I unnecessary semicolon we'll see it looks like I have an error but I can't figure out what it is right now so let's start with uh, let's make a variable called base so that JavaScript has access to that and it's going to be a number so I'm going to parse float this turns it into a number spell it right we are going to go to the document and get element by ID it starts to show up so I'll select it the ID that I want is base and we want to access the value of that particular element so we're going to put value here All right, something's fishy here did I spell this right Ver triangle area oh I spelled function wrong there it is you're probably yelling at the video as we speak there okay now I also need to get the height so I'm just going to copy this line and paste it and I'll change the oh I spelled float wrong jeepers creepers no wonder it didn't pop up okay let's call this height and let's go get the value of the height the other thing that I need is I need a place to put the output of my program so let's just create an output variable right now which will store the output paragraph object so document that get element by ID as you start typing if it shows up oops, when it shows up you can just hit enter and it'll finish it off for you we want to get the output I just want the object not the value here this will be the variable that I use to send the answer to the area later okay so we got the base and the height let's make a variable for our answer which is area and that's going to equal one half which I'm going to be lazy and put 0 0.5 times our base which we've already received times our height and if we assume that the input in those um, text boxes is correct over here then we can just do this and return it uh, by sending it to the uh, text content of the output however you know that sometimes users type in nonsense input so we really want to make sure that base and height are numbers so we're gonna say if is nan is not a number uh, base or or is two pipes right is nan is not a number uh, height let's put out a message that says the output text content will equal you did did not enter two numbers so we want to get some uh, numeric input here if we did get two numbers then we'll display the area oops and that's what this statement will do so please as you're writing code uh, to receive input 
start to do a little error checking ahead of time. If they input nonsense code, we're not going to do math with it. Okay. Uh, however, if they do input numbers, we can compute the area and then we can send that answer to the output. So output, uh, output, come on, spell it right, dot text content equals, and then we'll say area equals, and then we'll put the value for our variable on the end there. And that's it. It'll compute the area. We say semicolon. And this function is pretty much done. Now in this preview area, notice this has just been sitting here because we haven't really messed with the HTML yet. We've been adding the functionality. Let's just see if we type in, say, 4 for the base and 6 for the height. The answer should be 12. Let's just see if that works. And it didn't work. Okay. So that means um, we need to see what's going on here. Did we spell these things right? Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't connect the HTML to a JavaScript source file. So I forgot to put the script tag in. And the source for that script is triangleArea.js. close that script tag. Nothing needs to go in there. So the deal is not only do we have to have a uh, event handler for the onClick um, attribute, we also need to attach the JavaScript source to our HTML file and then we're going to save that. Now let's try this again. We're going to enter a 6 and uh, a 4 for the height. So just this should be 12 and the area does come out to be 12. That's excellent. Okay, so these two files are done. Right, let's just go through the JavaScript again. These first two lines go to the document and grab whatever the user's typed in, base and height. I also make a variable that'll hold my output paragraph object just so I know where I'm sending the stuff. It makes typing down here a little less painful. This if decision block is to make sure that what they typed in was actually a number. For example, if we go over here and we type in W E for we, and we type over here, um, love, and if I hit area this time, it says you didn't enter two numbers, which is what we wanted. So our program handles some of the nonsense input that we could receive. If we get numbers, we do the value, uh, calculate the value of the area, and then we display that in the text uh, content of that paragraph. Okay, now the thing about this web page is it doesn't look all that great, so let's just add a little bit of style. I want to show you a couple things that Adam can do here. So uh, let's add a style attribute to this web page. And let's see, what can we put for some CSS? Let's style the body. And let's do a couple things. Let's add a margin all the way around. And let's make it 20px. That will give us a little bit there, all the way around. Let's add a background color. Now check this out. Background pops up. I can select that. And then if you've added the color picker, you can right click and choose color picker and then a little color palette will come up and you can select any color you want. Let's say we want a little bit of kind of purple blue here. So I scroll there and then we want it kind of light. Oh, let's see. No, I don't like that. Let's make it a little bit of a, yeah, what is this kind of like teal or light blue or something? We'll make this our background. Notice that the RGB values show up. If you click that, it'll add it to your document. Uh, it did when I practiced before, so obviously something's not right here. What the heck's going on? Okay, let's try this again. Color picker. Otherwise, this video is not going to be very good. Let's just go with this orange stuff. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh, I'm very, very bummed that this isn't working. Okay, well, the other thing we can do is just type it in. RGB 118.215.89. I, don't, I already forgot what the letter numbers were. Was it 189? I don't know. There's the color. Uh, I gotta figure out why the color picker is not working, but it's supposed to just, you're supposed to click on that and it pops up in the page. Uh, this is an epic fail for this video, but we'll see how that's going. Uh, also, let's add um, a box around our output area paragraph. And for that, I'll make up a new style called output. And let's do a border. Let's do the border width. We'll make that 1px. 
Uh, let's make it 2px just for the heck of it. 2 pixels. And let's do a border style. Border styles down here. And let's do, uh, let's do solid. And let's add a border color. And we'll make that uh, blue. See how that looks. Now, it won't show up around there until we add that attribute, uh, the class attribute, to the paragraph. So now, it should, let's see, we got border style solid, border width 2px, border color blue, class output, let's do p.out. Oh, I spelled output wrong. There it is. I'm like, why is it showing up? All right, there we go. So now we got this blue rectangle around our area output. Now you can style that a little bit. Let's put some padding in here. Let's go 5px. 5 pixels of padding all the way around. See, it gives a little space between the line and the uh, words area. Okay, so that's a little bit of CSS. You can add more if you want. Um, but that's the basics of this assignment. You make an HTML document which just displays your form basically. It displays the two input values, a button, and then an output area. And it connects to a JavaScript uh, callback function which we've stored in a separate file. You have to add a script tag at the end. Uh, we put it at the end because we don't want the script to load until the body is entirely loaded. Uh, make sure you put the source file that matches the file name that you created and then your JavaScript file has the functionality. It has to go back to the document and grab the values from the boxes and it has to know where to put the output. So we have those three variables that we assign at the beginning. We double check our, out, our input to make sure that it's numbers. We do our math and we put the answer back in the output paragraph. Uh, let's call it a day on that one. Hopefully this helped. We're going to do a similar assignment with a different formula where we expect the same structure. Uh, one last thing. Make sure that you save these files uh, in a location that you can find and you can always test it out in your browser. For example, if you want to test it out in Chrome, you just bring up your Chrome browser and you can do a control O for open if you're on Windows or a command O if you're on Mac and you can go find that file and see what it looks like right in um, Chrome. So let's see where did I put that programming, uh, JavaScript, Triangle area, where is that sucker? There it is. And you open the HTML file. And when you do that, you see the same um, web page that we saw in the preview. And let's just test it out. Let's go 10 and 5. This should equal 25. And it does. Good. Okay. That'll do it for the video. Good luck. And let me know if you have any questions.